You can start your mineral exploration project by determining the survey direction and creating a sampling grid. If you have decided that soil sampling will work for your project, determine the survey grid according to mapping and ore forming dynamics. To establish the ore forming concept, you will need to compare the existing data with the results of literature reviews. At this point, it is crucial that the relevant deposit experience and field studies are conducted correctly. If you are pursuing an intrusion-related ore formation, assess the sequence in which metal-bearing volatiles are released from the magma, or in other words, evaluate the element zoning in the fertile magma. Group the rock samples based on the lithology from which you took them, record the details on the sample form, and if necessary, conduct your microscopy and XRD studies to categorize the mineralization and alteration into phases. The information you obtain about the origin of the mineralization and the assumptions you make while interpreting this data are of significant importance. In order to perform trace element determination on the collected rock samples, Examine which elements move together proportionally in your analytical results. Color each element in the table according to its values in its respective column and apply a top cut to the peak values if necessary. Color the elements that move together in the same rows. Keep the Goldschmidt classification for lithophilic, siderophilic, and chalcophilic groups in mind and interpret the origin along with the elements you have related to the mineralization. To determine ore forming trends by analyzing the sample results, create your own legend manually, use histograms, and decide on the threshold values yourself. Generally, remove samples that go beyond the overflow limits, forming unexpected peak values in soil sampling. Then, define grade ranges in the histogram, experiment by narrowing and expanding until the bell curve is formed, and decide on the legend intervals. Examine soil samples that have been automatically colored by the software and compare them with manually created legends, taking into account geostatistical interpretation with experienced eyes. After coloring the samples with the legend, zoom in and out to view the big picture more distinctly. The trend shown by the purple line has been determined with the legend automatically set by the software when no upper threshold value was given. The trend shown by the green line has been drawn according to the manually created legend. Always analyze your systematic soil sampling results in three dimensions. Interpret the samples you have taken by considering meteorological conditions and topography in three dimensions. Remember that the soil samples you have collected may have been formed from erosion, drainage channels, or transport processes. After examining the curved trends drawn in 2D, you may conclude that they are planar in 3D. Analysis results of worn-out mineralizations or anomalies reaching the surface via capillarity may have moved along topography and faults, sliding down slopes. The concept of capillarity is quite important in soil sampling. Capillarity can be explained as the upward movement of water through the capillary spaces in ground rocks and soil that have permeable pores. The rising water, which may dissolve minerals in deeper enriched masses, can accumulate these elements in specific places on the surface, 
even in trace amounts. Mineral dissolving circulating groundwater from ore bodies and alteration zones reaches the surface through capillarity, leaving minerals and elements in fractures and soil horizons. By determining the structural elements and geomorphological features in the field and interpreting them with the concept of capillarity, you can make the most accurate decisions. It will be beneficial for you to seek help from experienced consultants for all stages, from determining whether soil sampling will work in your licensed area to interpreting the sampling results.